Using Insight, you can easily explore the impact and interaction between several design variables that affect the photovoltaic potential of the surfaces in your model. The interrelated factors available to explore in the Insight interface include the photovoltaic surface coverage, the photovoltaic panel efficiency, and the photovoltaic payback limit. Let's start by opening a Revit model that we'll use for this analysis. We'll open a model that includes shading elements. Reopen the Classroom with Shades Revit model. Next, we'll view the Insight results for this model. If needed, generate insights for this model by clicking the Analyze tab and creating the energy model, then clicking Generate to send the model to Insight for analysis. When the analysis is done, click Optimize to access the results. Then open the Shading Devices Comparison Insight. Now we'll apply the baseline scenario and open the desired model. Choose the baseline scenario from the Scenarios menu in the Model Comparison pane. Then open the Classroom with Shades model from the list of models included in this insight. Next, we'll explore the potential effect of PV surface coverage. Scroll down in the Insight interface to view the PV surface coverage factor. Note the range of values being considered in the current settings. Click the factor to edit the settings for PV surface coverage. Then hover the pointer over each of the points representing an option for surface coverage to see the effect on EUI or annual cost associated with that option. Next, we'll select the range of values to be considered for the PV surface coverage factor. Drag the handles at the left and right ends of the factor range to select 0% coverage. The PV surface coverage factor should include the percentage of total roof area that could be covered by PV panels if they were economically attractive, and a reduction to allow for maintenance access, rooftop equipment, and system infrastructure. Note how the EUI mean or annual cost mean changes to reflect the new value for this factor. Also note how your EUI mean or annual cost mean compare to the ASHRAE 90.1 and Architecture 2030 baselines following this change. If the surface coverage graph shows a horizontal straight line, this indicates that no PV panels are being placed because the PV potential of the roof surfaces is too low to justify placing panels on them given the current assumptions for the panel efficiency and required payback period. When the surface coverage is 0%, no surfaces are allowed to be covered with PV panels, so the payback limit and panel efficiency graphs display a horizontal straight line. The impact of these factors is never considered. Next, drag the handles at the left and right ends of the factor range to select 90% coverage. Note how your EUI mean or annual cost mean changes to reflect the new value for this factor. Also note how the EUI mean or annual cost mean compares to the ASHRAE 90.1 and Architecture 2030 baselines following this change. Close the PV surface coverage factor to apply the selected range of settings. Next, we'll explore the potential effect of PV panel efficiency. Scroll down the Insight interface to view the PV panel efficiency factor. Note the range of values being considered in the current settings. Click the factor to edit the settings for PV panel efficiency factor, and hover the pointer over each of the points representing an option for the panel efficiency to see the effect on EUI or annual cost associated with that option. Next, we'll select the range of values to be considered for the panel efficiency. Drag the handles at the left and right ends of the factor range to select the panel efficiencies to be considered in this analysis. For instance, select the middle of the range, an efficiency of 18.6%. All roof surfaces are evaluated to see if the energy available, as determined by the geometry and the efficiency of the PV panels, will be sufficient to meet the desired payback period. Increasing the efficiency of the PV panels generally makes more roof surfaces viable for placing PV panels by increasing the amount of energy that can be produced, generating more energy per square foot to the point where they meet the payback period desired. Conversely, 
Decreasing the panel efficiency may cause some roof panels to be eliminated from consideration because they no longer meet the payback requirements. One note of caution, the effect seen of changes in the panel efficiency factor is often limited by the settings chosen for the payback limit factor because potential roof surfaces must also meet the payback requirements in order to contribute to reducing the predicted EUI mean. If portions of the PV efficiency graph display a horizontal straight line, this indicates that changing the panel efficiency will not affect the area of the PV panels considered, likely due to the PV surface coverage limitation or PV payback limit requirements currently selected. After changing the range of PV values to be considered, note how the EUI mean or annual cost mean changes to reflect the new range of values for this factor. Also note how your EUI mean or annual cost mean compares to the ASHRAE 90.1 and Architecture 2030 baselines following these changes. Close the PV panel efficiency factor to apply the selected range of settings. Finally, let's consider the potential effect of the third factor, the PV payback limit. Scroll down the inside interface to view the PV payback limit factor. Note the range of payback years being considered in the current settings. Click the factor to edit the settings for PV payback limit factor and hover the pointer over each of the points representing an option for the payback period to see the effect on the EUI mean or annual cost mean associated with that option. Now let's select the range of values to be considered for the PV payback limit. Drag the handles at the left end and right ends of the factor range to select the payback period to be considered in this analysis. For example, try selecting a range from 20 to 30 years. All roof surfaces are evaluated to see if the energy available, as determined by the geometry and the efficiency of the PV panels, will be sufficient to meet the payback period. Roof surfaces may not meet a payback limit if the electricity in the area is very cheap, or if the building does not receive enough sun exposure. As the payback limit is increased, less efficient areas of the roof become viable, and typically, more the potential PV surface coverage area will qualify and be considered as contributing to the energy available. To consider a larger area of roof surfaces for PV panels, try extending the payback period to a larger number of years. If portions of the PV payback limit graph display a horizontal straight line with an EUI equal to zero, this indicates that the given geometry of the roof surfaces and the efficiency of the PV panels, no roof surfaces are viable within the range of payback limits. After changing the PV payback limit factor, note how the EUI mean or annual cost mean changes to reflect the new range of values for this factor, also note how your EUI mean or annual mean compared to the ASHRAE 90.1 and Architecture 2030 baselines following these changes. Close the PV payback limit factor to apply the selected range of settings. Returning to the Insight dashboard for this model, note that you can review the impact of each of these changes by hovering over the model history. You can see the effect on the EUI mean or annual cost mean as well as the range of potential values. In this case, note that changing the PV payback limit had the largest effect on changing the range of potential EUI values.